Hi there, Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA. I just want to do a bit of an extension on a recent budgeting and forecasting video or tutorial that I, that was released on Enterprise DNA TV. It's got a lot of feedback about it. Uh, it, it was it was based upon the ultimate budget allocation methodology. Okay, so I want to extend on that uh, a little bit. I'll, if you want to just go through the whole budgeting scenario uh, formula that I've got up here on the on the on the screen, again, I would highly re highly recommend going through that that recent video. I went into this in detail, and I think it will help you out a lot in terms of what you're what you're looking to do. This might look like a complex uh, formula just because there's a little bit to it, but uh, once you understand how uh, to work through it, I think you'll see how intuitive it can actually be. But basically what I want to show you here is how we can extend this, how we can branch out into some other calculations, okay? And to be honest, once we get this set up, the rest is easy, like seriously, seriously easy. And and I just want to show you some of that stuff today, okay? So if we go and uh, recreate our uh, table here of just the scenario, so this, this table here is basically highlighting this here, okay? So it's exactly the same. So we're, we've overlaid our total sales to our budgets okay and so you got to remember you got to remember here that budgets our budgets are at a different granularity okay so they're at a monthly granularity in this particular example okay and uh, the sales information is at a daily information a uh, daily granularity sorry okay now what we can do though is now that we've allocated this budget correctly we can start branching out further okay so say for instance i want to work out what is the what is the difference in my budget so uh, sales versus budgets okay so all i need to do here is go total sales minus total budgets right because i've got uh it's, it's budget budget allocation too okay and we don't we definitely do not want this uh column reference here before a measure we don't need it Okay, so I've branched out very simply into this calculation and I can drag that in and now I can see the difference in my budgets, right? So very, very easy to do. And then obviously you could, you could very quickly change this into a visualization like so, and then place this down below this particular visualization here to try and give you an idea of the difference like so okay so very very quick and easy in terms of in terms of doing that what we could also do though what we could also do is we could take this into our, our cumulative total as well and i really like to um, use cumulative totals especially when i'm showcasing trends and uh, in this particular case obviously we're trying to showcase well are we behind or below budget? And maybe from a cumulative perspective, we don't really care about, you know, on a day to day, but we want to see, okay, well, how does this play out over time? Okay, so what we could do, we could do it, we could do it a couple of ways. We could throw that sales versus budgets into a cumulative total pattern, but I think probably a safer way to do it because uh, there's a there's a few nuances to the cumulative total pattern that you need to just be aware of is actually creating the two cumulative totals separately. Okay, so we can again do a similar thing so i'm just going to grab these i've already i've already created these uh, prior and i cover these in the ultimate uh, budget allocation uh, methodology tutorial as well but basically what i've done is i've gone and calculated up my cumulative budgets so you see here this it starts at 8874 then it accumulates upwards and so does a cumulative total right so again, and the cumulative total pattern is again, this is, this is the simpler version where I've just used total sales, but in the budgeting one, because of the granularity difference, what I needed to do was create a virtual table inside of SumX, iterate through it, and then create my cumulative budgets, okay? But you'll see here that I've got my cumulative total as it should be, and then if I wanted to go and work out my cumulative total difference, right? I again, I've already done it here, cumulative totals minus my cumulative budgets and I can bring this into my particular report here and then this visualization is going to look pretty good it's going to it's going to see it's going to show us and I'll just delete that because I don't need it um, it's going to show us cumulatively how we have gone and I think this represents it probably the best to see how we are actually performing 
because you can't really see if you if you just drill into this visual down here you can't really see it's not immediately obvious to me for example how we're actually performing overall you know we can see where there's a few spikes here above the budgets but there's actually a lot below budget as well um, and you and that that could be to do with what happens throughout a week you know there's you might not have all um, high sales throughout your entire week uh, and some you know the budget is allocated e evenly across every single day okay um, but in this particular case you know the cumulative total the accumulated difference is going to is just going to represent the um, the results to us okay so you see here that the cumulative result or the cumulative difference this of sales versus budgets is showing that we're actually a little bit behind okay not significant because if you look at we're 100k behind but on average it looks like you know every single day we're selling about 8,000 or so 9,000 so you know it's 11 days 11 to 12 days you know we're sort of behind um, in terms of our in terms of our sales okay so it's a good it's a this is just a really simple an easy and effective way um, to branch out from those initial calculations, right? And to me, you know, I can I see this quite often on the enterprise DNA support forum. This this gets made overly complex when, but hopefully you can see that I've just simplified it down, kept it very quick and easy to implement, and then I now have this dynamic calculation which will adjust for any change that I make um, across my um, across my data set right I can filter by any of my dimensions in my model okay so I'm gonna round things off there quick and easy um, but just wanted uh, wanted to finish or round off uh, those particular uh, that particular tutorial a little bit more than I probably did at the time um, and just show you we we could take this and how easy and literally how easy it is to do it I know this wasn't a super um, advanced tutorial but it doesn't need to be all the time because um, simple things can do and um, can make can create very valuable insights uh, when using Power BI effectively. Okay, don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA, and as always, if you can throw the video a like, I really appreciate it. Okay, all the very best. Talk to you soon.